creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn all about edible plants. We'll talk about building a healthier heart and a healthier life. And finally, we'll demonstrate how to make beautiful bronze columns. One of my guests today is Kurt James, and he owns and operates Garden Source Nursery and Landscaping. And Kurt's going to talk about edible plants such as thyme, stevia, lavender, as well as geraniums, pansies, and other flowers. These look especially pretty in a punch bowl or on a salad or dessert plate. He lives in Portales, New Mexico. Another guest is Pat Baird, and she's a registered dietitian and author. Pat's going to explain how to build a healthier heart and a healthier life. Her four-step plan is doable for everyone. She lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. And we'll begin the show with Jamie Alcorta, who will show how to paint columns. You'll be surprised at how easy it is to create these elegant bronze-looking columns for your house. Her company is Walls of Art in Lubbock, Texas. Jamie, it's really nice to have you here. I understand you've worked with lots of clients on um, adding uh, uh, decorative things to their home to match existing or new hardware or bath fixtures. You mean to create something that looks metallic is what you're talking about? Right, uh, oil rub bronze is a popular uh, finish for plumbing fixtures uh -huh. and cabinet hardware. And um, this is a finish that you can um, paint to coordinate with those. You can even paint. So it looks metal, it's not, but it looks like it. Right, uh -huh. yeah, fiberglass columns is what is this that, picture is. Uh -huh. So this is what you were trying to match. Right, this the, is dark, the bath hardware. Dark uh -huh. plumbing fixtures. But and this is what your client wanted. To match. Uh-huh. Uh, some drama to that, uh, those uh -huh. columns, just plain well, there, white There is drama. Columns. It's just beautiful. It really contrasts with, uh -huh. with everything. Oh, and you even did the, the top part, too. And you can do this on any accessory urns. You can paint an old brass light fixture to look more like new, newer bronze ones. So it works on wood, ceramic, You just have to tile. prep. Right, prep it, prep it. And right, and then you can yeah, paint this finish on a okay. lot of different things. And what was this originally? What color was it? It was white. It's just oh, it a was. plaster uh -huh. column capital. Mm -hmm. okay. And the first step um, I did was to prime it. I sprayed on a primer oh, and it, I used a, a rust one so it's kind of close to the color that we are going for if you don't get mm -hmm. it completely covered it's okay for some of that to show through okay interior exterior primer paint mm -hmm. and and uh, you did it's solid right okay. yes and then the next step I did was um, I sprayed a little bit of black mm -hmm. and instead of you know long strokes I did kind of round um, a round pattern oh and why the, did you do that uh, just to kind of give it a modeled, uh, a modeled look, okay. and I didn't I didn't spray 100% of black. I left some open areas uh, to kind of fill in with a little bit mm -hmm. of brown. So there's kind of oh, okay. a mingling of two colors mm -hmm. on that. And if you get too much brown, you can kind of lightly go back with the black, just a real fine mist to kind of get a little bit more black. Okay. And then after that dries. Uh, these are um, water-based glazes mixed, uh, two parts glaze to one part paint, and these are metallic paints. And you can buy the paint that already has the glaze in it, but you can mix your own? Right, yeah, they mm -hmm. do sell metallic glazes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm using three. I have a bronze, a copper, and a gold. Oh. And I'm going to uh, stipple this on where you kind of still see the, mm -hmm. you see the tips of the brush not completely blended and you want to work in you're doing the copper work in several c colors at once you don't want to do all one color you want to mix in and kind of mingle them together hope you don't mind paint on your <laughs> turntable no that'll be <laughs> And you don't necessarily start with uh, the one, each color in the same order. Just 
No, just color uh, yeah, just as long as you get a little bit of every color. And if you're doing a a column, you'd probably start from the top and work your way down. Oh, uh huh. So you spend a lot of time on ladders, I bet, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite a bit. And you just want to. You want to still see some of the black coming through. It gives it the depth. And this is this is what the, you're achieving. Right. The final. This has been clear coated with a glossy uh, spray clear coat. After after, after all the paint is dried. Is, uh, That's just to protect the surfaces. Right. Uh -huh. And you can do satin if you don't want it as glossy. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. It's hard to believe that it's not the original metal <laughs> that it, and that it started out white. So once again, if people would want to add the metallic metal look, it can all be done with paints. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for showing us how easy it is to do. I was expecting it to be very long and drawn out. Thank you very Pretty much, simple. Jamie. You're welcome. Thank you. Pat, thank you so much for being here today. I know we're going to talk about heart health and some things that we can all do, regardless of it's children or yes. adults, that we need to make these small changes in our lives, but they make a considerable difference, don't they? They really do, because the, the other good part about this is that not only do we not have to make major changes, but you know, when we build a healthier heart, we're actually building a healthier body. Mm -hmm. So the good news is that with some simple lifestyle changes, and since I'm a dietitian, I'm going to talk about the nutrition changes. Uh -huh. um, it's just very small little things on what most people are probably doing already. Mm -hmm. But I think we've heard over and over and over again, not just for heart disease, but for general health, everything, the stop smoking. This is it. That's this it. is the one thing mm -hmm. to eliminate, that if anyone is still smoking, it's really critical to stop. And it goes beyond all of the different cancers uh -huh. that smoking contributes to. Do you know that 20% of the deaths from heart disease mm -hmm. are actually related to smoking? Now, is that so, to smoking or what about the second hand and, and other types of smoke that we are subjected to? Yeah. Well, they contribute, you know, they build it, but we know that 20% of the people who actually have mm -hmm. heart disease were smokers, the ones who died. Okay. So That's a good reason yes. in and of itself right there, but everyone should. Correct. <laughs> okay, fiber. I know as a dietitian, you're always talking about yeah. getting more fiber in yes. our diet. And what's especially important for heart health is soluble fiber. There's soluble fiber, insoluble fiber. Uh -huh. And I think a lot of people have heard about the benefits of oatmeal. Oh, yeah. Because... Mm -hmm the soluble fiber actually binds cholesterol in the body and does help to lower it. Oh, uh -huh. However, it's important for people to know that there's soluble fiber in lots of different foods. Actually, there is more soluble fiber in beans than there is in oatmeal. We also get it mm -hmm. from green peas, from um, split peas, as well as um, all of the different colors. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the legume family, the lentils, the beans, the peas, mm -hmm. and a perfect snack for heart health, air pop popcorn. Air pop, Leave that's important. Leave off the fat, uh -huh. easy on the salt, because there is soluble fiber in uh -huh. corn. Gosh, so, that's nice to know something that we all probably love yes. uh, is really good for us. And we might point out that the uh, the fiber is just as healthy for us in uh, dry beans as it is in the canned products. Absolutely. Oh, that's an excellent point. Yes, it is. So for convenience sake, mm -hmm. you know, open up a can of beans. These are really economical. Uh -huh, they so really are. From a price point of view, you can't beat dried beans uh -huh. and cook them yourself. Well, then we go to fats, and yeah. I love the fact that you have the avocados there, and we'll get to that in a minute, too. Yes. You know, the message from the Heart Association is it's the type of fat that is more important to heart disease than even the amount of fat. So the we type. want to have those heart-healthy monounsaturated fats uh -huh. that you find in corn oil, 
olive oil, in nuts and seeds and avocado. So, so mono unsaturated yeah. fat. And we want to have leaner meats where we see less marbling, uh -huh. less of those white streaks. Uh -huh. Those white That's streaks fat. indicate saturated mm -hmm. fat. That's the kind that builds up uh -huh. in the bloodstream and contributes to heart attacks and strokes. And I know you firmly believe that we should all read the labels, and it is listed on there. Now, what it, about trans fat? Are we mostly, have we just about eliminated that? I think we have. Food manufacturers have done a good job, so you can look at the labels and clearly see zero trans mm -hmm. fat or one gram of trans fat. Mm -hmm. And in the same vein, you can see how much saturated fat and how much mono uh -huh. unsaturated Now, what if it fat? has some polyunsaturated? Is that that's fine. pretty good? That's, oh, that's fine. good, too? You know, I think a general idea is to mix up your oils. Oh. The canola and the olive oil are the highest in monos, okay? The corn oil, the safflower oil are a little bit low, but, you know, they have benefits, too. Uh -huh. So mix and match, oh. but... That's Especially if you already mm -hmm. have heart disease, this is what you want to focus on is the monos. You want to snack on walnuts and almonds. You want to try to have um, guacamole mm. instead of, say, a sour cream dip. Oh, so mm -hmm. that you it's have healthier. your snacks, you watch those football games and have a lot of fun but do it in a healthful way. Uh -huh. and, and moderation still is true for everything because it, we may think, oh, I can eat nuts. That means a serving size of nuts. That's right. About it's one ounce. It's about 22 almonds. Okay. That's one ounce. That's one ounce. So uh -huh. there's a good way to um, figure it out. And we can't say enough about the importance of fruits and vegetables, we can we? For overall health, for heart health, but what is really exciting in this category is a study that came out about berries. Oh. And they found that women who eat two to three servings of berries every day, uh -huh. listen to this, had a 32% lower risk of heart disease than women who don't. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know. What a nice diagnosis. It, Just eat fruit, 32%. Berries. That's it, amazing. It's just such an incredibly high number. So, you know, I mean, you can have them whole as a snack. Mm -hmm. You can make them into a smoothie. Mm -hmm. Uh, use them cut up over yogurt for breakfast uh -huh. in the morning. There are just so many ways to do it. But here is the thought process behind recommending fruits and vegetables is it's the pigments. It's the phyto or the plant nutrients that actually contribute mm -hmm. the health benefits. In berries, it's compounds called anthocyanins that they're antioxidants. Mm -hmm. They protect okay. cells from being damaged. Uh -huh. And what. isn't it true that the brighter the color, we want the nice deep colors in the fruits and vegetables yes. that we eat? And But we want all colors too. Uh -huh. Reds, yellows, greens, blues, oranges, mm. um, because they all have different phytonutrients. Uh -huh. And speaking of phytonutrients, now I like this section. Uh, how here. much better does life get <laughs> than to chocolate. have a dietitian tell you <laughs> to have some chocolate for uh -huh. heart health? Now, viewers, here's the secret: is we're really talking about dark chocolate, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're talking about the amount of cacao. Cacao is actually part of the cocoa seeds oh. that has flavanols. Again, That's those plant looking. nutrients. Uh -huh. And we want a cacao content higher than 70%. So here today, I have 72%. Uh -huh. I have 86%. Uh -huh. I know that there's some percentages that are up in the 90s. Oh, is that right? So and that's, on, that's going to be on the label. We just it, need to look for that. That's what you need to look for. Uh -huh. Again, read those labels. Uh -huh. So stop smoking, more soluble fiber, choose the right fat. Fruits and vegetables, especially berries, berries, and one ounce of dark chocolate. One ounce. Okay. Well, I think this is very doable. Thank you so much for My sharing pleasure. this with us. My pleasure. It was good to be us. here, Cheryl.
Kurt, it's really nice to have you here. And I've wanted you to come and talk about edible flowers for a long time. So I'm really glad that you took time to do that. You do this program for youth groups and schools and women's clubs, don't you? Yes, we uh, go into the junior high and we'll teach them uh, about edible plants there and the dif uh, different civic organizations uh -huh. in the community. Well, I, I, I've, I've heard about it and I've never seen it. So I'm anxious to see uh, which ones are safe to go out and eat. And then you'll point out some that we need to avoid. That's exactly right. And I do want to point out first First of all, that uh, each person is more tolerant to these plants than other people. So don't oh. just take and start eating plants at random. <laughs> <laughs> and especially tell your children not to go out and gobble down the plant. Exactly, because there are poisonous plants, sure. definitely. And you uh -huh. just want to, uh, any of these that we talk about today, use sparingly. Now, I've, I've seen uh, punch bowls with flowers floating or petals floating yes. on the top. But I thought those were just for decoration. So any of these that are edible, we could certainly do that and even put it in the punch Yes, up. it'll add that little extra pizzazz to mm -hmm. any any dish that you uh, are putting together for a party or for a celebration of That's any type. That's a good idea. Yes. Okay, shall we start with these? What are these? Let's start with seeds? this. This is the uh, purple hyacinth bean or scarlet runner bean. This is actually from my yard, and these seeds that you have in that plate are actually passed down from my grandmother. I've had them for many oh. many years. Uh -huh. uh, this vine, when it is planted, this this yes, uh -huh. all of those right there are, um, they'll Whoops. get up about five, six feet tall, maybe about five feet wide, and they have beautiful blooms. But when you go to eat these, uh, you can take these seed pods when they're young, uh -huh. as I brought in today. You don't want them to be fully mature. You'll uh, take those and you'll eat those just as you do uh, snap peas. So you don't eat the flower. That is you correct. eat the, the bean that's inside, or the seed. The seed uh -huh. that's inside, or you can eat the entire pod in oh. a salad or just as a side dish. Uh -huh. But one thing that I do want to point out on this is, even though the vine is, is very pretty, whenever the seeds mature, you can harvest those. And uh, when you go to cook them, you'll want to soak them overnight just like you Kinda would. Kind of we do pinto beans exactly. or something like that. And uh, the caution on these is uh, when you are boiling them or cooking them, you need to empty the water two times and then you can eat the final product. Just rinse it, put Correct. fresh water in while you're cooking it. Yes, uh -huh. so that uh, purple oh, hyacinth bean, if anybody is interested in doing that, I would go online and uh, make sure that they get the right to, uh, cooking instructions. And what time of the year do these bloom? Is they it a will, summer flower? Or uh, it fall? is. It, they will uh -huh. start blooming about July. Oh, okay. And all the way to frost. Well, the, the, the plant itself is beautiful if you never harvested it. What I like about it is the underside of the leaves has a little bit of uh, that uh, purple Ties color Ties in also. that purple, yes, doesn't it? Does. it? Uh -huh. You will love that vine, even if you just grew it for ornamental purposes. Uh -huh. Right. Well, I've yeah. never seen that before. Now, this is a geranium, and I was telling you I have a hard time growing geraniums. Well, uh, they, they like to have dry feet, so just don't overwater those. I think if that's been my those. problem. <laughs> <laughs> but the blooms are edible, and they'll make an excellent addition to a salad or just a side dish of any uh -huh. sort. And they kind of have a uh, almost a peppery taste. Almost a little bitter, but you know, if you have the different types of lettuces and you're trying to mm. uh, Ooh, balance out your salad. the color would be so pretty in a salad. It would mm -hmm. really make a difference in the salad. So I think that's a great addition. Mm -hmm. Plus it makes a good conversation piece at a dinner party. <laughs> I guess it would. <laughs> What's this red lettuce? Exactly. <laughs> and you know, geraniums come in many different colors, so oh. that would make a, a wonderful addition to a salad. Well, it would. The oh, next my favorite rose. Rose. Mm -hmm. Rose petals are uh, edible also. You know, sometimes they'll use them on cakes. Uh, you uh -huh. can put those in salads. Um, if you'd like to take a taste of that, it's actually a little sweet. Plus, it smells good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and with the roses that do put out the rose hips, you know, rose hips is, uh, are herbs, so you can eat mm -hmm. the rose hips as well to take care of. Uh, now, what about the leaves? Do you, no, you don't want don't, to eat the leaves. Just that. the petals. Mm -hmm. What do you think same of the thing? taste of that? Really, I don't get a lot of taste. Well, I just think it'd be pretty to use. To use, I have a. Uh, I guess everybody's palate's a little different. I mm -hmm. taste it as a little bit sweet, which I, it's sweeter than the geranium. Oh, yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that much. The next one is a dianthus, oh, and dianthus uh -huh. bloom early in the spring. So as you're doing that Easter salad, uh, oh, they're, they're that already would be in bloom. Pretty. It uh -huh. would, wouldn't it? And plus, it make a wonderful addition to cakes, things like mm -hmm. that. It's going to have about the same taste as your geraniums do. But look at the color on that. Uh -huh. Dianthus come in many different colors. And so I can a, grow that. I love to have dianthus in pots. It's such a pretty flower. And it's a hardy perennial too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll uh, enjoy that. Now You're the next around. one has to be my favorite, just because there are so many different colors, and that is the pansy. pansy or the viola, or they're also known as Johnny Jump Ups, the smaller varieties. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, Sometimes people will take these and they'll sugar them and put them on cakes. Yeah. 
and I know mm -hmm. you've uh, had some guests that have made bookmarks and things uh -huh. like that. So they're multi uh, multifunctional. Now I like the, and you can pick your favorite one there if you'd like to taste it. This definitely has a peppery taste and I think it just really adds to a salad because sometimes people don't like to use uh, the dressings that are available. Mm -hmm. This right here adds a little different taste and mm. texture to a salad. It does. And color. And so it's a pansy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like you say, they come in all different colors, so yes, that'd be fun. they do. And these I have also seen on cakes, and I've also seen them floating in punch bowls, so uh -huh. that would make I, a great addition. The pansy is the one that I was referring to about punch bowls, or and the rose, too. They, they've uh -huh. done that as well. Now, the next one, hmm. I really am a partial lily? to the daylilies. Daylily. And there's many different varieties. This one just happens to be a re-blooming, so it's going to bloom more than once. Uh -huh. But the, the leaves, if you'll tear some of that off, they're thicker. Oh, they are a lot And they thicker. do have... A unique taste, almost a lettuce type taste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just think they're they're great. And uh, you don't oh. want to eat the buds on these. You'll only want to eat the open blooms. Open blooms, mm -hmm. okay. That's almost true of, of everything we've talked about, isn't it? Yes, except for this. Except for that right there. Pods. You can uh, dry those beans out and you can use mm -hmm. those during the winter. The next, uh, pretty much everybody that grows a garden grows squash. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. did you know the squash blooms yeah. are edible? They sure are. They have a really unique taste, and some people will even take and um, mix them with some egg batter and um, cornmeal and fry them up. And I thought uh, you just did that with the squash. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it has a unique taste, the does blooms. it not? Mm -hmm. It really does. It makes an interesting conversation mm -hmm. piece for, for <laughs> when you're uh, uh, at dinner or what have mm -hmm. you. Before we move on into some herbs, I want to point out a couple of other ones that are edible that I didn't have uh, uh, access to this time of year is the hollyhock. Oh, uh -huh. uh, edible marigolds, the blooms. You want to be ver uh, eat those very sparingly. Oh, I didn't know mar. I knew marigolds were good to keep bugs and things uh, away from other plants, but we can eat the flower. You can uh, with anything, just mm -hmm. in in moderation. moderation. If you are going to eat mums, which during the fall time of the year mums are in bloom, uh, make sure you blanch those before you eat those. Blanch the mums. Yes. Okay. And there's many good other tips. varieties out there. It'd probably be a good idea if anybody's going to, to try this is to maybe go online and uh, the uh -huh. internet and try to find some recipes to go uh -huh. along with it. Yeah. Or even go online for edible flowers and may, they may be growing some they didn't even know they that, could be. That they could be eating. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, I'm going to move into herbs. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I did not know we could grow and that was uh, stevia, which is the natural That's sweetener. That's a flower? Yes, like, that's a, I mean, that's like the sweetener. Stevia. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And if you taste this, it's very sweet. It tastes just like the uh, artificial sweetener. Mm. You'll want to dry the leaves and then that use those good. in place of sugar. And if you wanted to use a pestle and you could just mash it up a little bit. Yes, you should. Sure oh, that is sweet. It's very sweet, mm -hmm. isn't it? it yeah. It tastes good. That's Plus, good. The, the plant's not very attractive, but let me tell you, if you have it in your garden, you're walking by with some friends, you can just take a leaf and eat it and they'll look <laughs> at you. Just have a little nibble. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think everyone uh, is familiar with mint. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Not only is it uh, high in vitamin C, but it also help uh, curb a uh, or reduce a upset stomach. Did you know that? No. And, but I uh, love to have it in like iced tea or something. Yes, I, I use so it good. to grind it up and put it in sun tea or in iced mm -hmm. tea. You can also dry it and you can use it with your tea ball to steep mint tea during the winter. Oh, okay. You'll want to okay. harvest it when it's at this stage before it blooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like the taste of mint. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, among other things, chives. They're oh. so easy to grow. And we don't have to taste these because they have the, the oniony taste, uh -huh. but uh, uh, we keep them growing at our house. We use them on baked potatoes, put them in a salad. They're uh -huh. so easy to grow, plus they're high in vitamins, and they're oh. very healthy for you. And they start coming out probably about February, March, depending on your, your, your uh, zone, uh, uh -huh. where you're growing those at. But they're so easy to use. You just take some scissors, go out there and cut them, wash them, and then just uh -huh. cut them up and use them on your baked potatoes. How easy is that? Um, among other things is rosemary. Uh -huh. Those work really good. Sage, all those have beautiful flowers and they're readily available in pretty much any garden and they're easy to grow. Well, I, I'm glad we, we finally got around to doing this because it's really interesting and, it, and like you say, a great conversation piece, but a lot of things we can do with it that we didn't even think about. That's correct. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to wear scarves, show some neat storage solutions, and discuss the journey of a healer. One of my next guests is a wardrobe consultant and author, and she's going to show how to wear a scarf in multiple ways. Another guest is going to show how to use dresser drawers to create an under-the-bed storage bin. This home storage solution is so easy and attainable for even first-time do-it-yourselfers. 
And finally, we'll talk to a doctor of oriental medicine about a book he's written on relieving pain in just three seconds. He's going to talk about his journey from being a licensed optician to becoming an acupuncturist. All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6600 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6600 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.